This episode is brought to you by ExpressVPN, Upstart, and Hymns. More on that later. Let's do the do. You're watching The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler at your mom's house. Welcome back to The Honeydew, y'all. We're doing it over here at Studio Jeans at your mom's house. I'm Ryan Sickler. You can find me on all social media at Ryan Sickler. I'm ryansickler.com on the interwebs. Uh, Baltimore, September 14th. I'm coming back to the famous. Tickets are still on sale. You better get them now because it's going to sell out. I don't know if I could do a second show this time, all right? Uh, and all of you, every week I say it, and I want to let you know I'm sincere. I see the messages. I see the, the posts. I see everything, and I, I love you for it. Thank you for the support. Uh, make sure you're subscribed to the Your Mom's House YouTube page. Uh, make sure you engage with the sponsors. That's the best way to help the show. I get asked that a lot. What's the best thing I could do? So thank you for those of you who, who do that. And um, uh, the website, the honeydewpodcast.com. That's where you can find merch, social media links, all that. You go there, everything you need is there. You can email me there, all that good stuff. Um, and if you're new to the show, what we do here is we highlight the lowlights. I say every week that these are the stories behind the storytellers. And this week, my storyteller, very excited to have him on. First time here on The Honeydew. Ladies and gentlemen, Adam Ray. Welcome to The Honeydew, brother. Yeah, baby. Welcome Let's to The Honeydew. Get Dewey. Is that, Adam you say Ray. that? You can say it. Yeah. No one has. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to be the first time. No one's time. dropped the Dewey. <laughs> Dude, there used to be, there used to be a uh, kid in my high school. His name is Dwight Angle. Uh, and he was one of those... We called him Dewey because no one called him right angle. <laughs> he, we should have, uh, where were you 20 years ago? He, he had like a very, do you remember officer Dewey from scream? I think yeah. it was David Arquette. Yeah. And, uh, he was kind of, he just had some Dewey qualities to him, but he, uh, he was this type of kid that he was running for president in uh, senior of high school and you're supposed to sign on the sheet basically that you abide, uh, or obliged to, um, the uh, you know high school the code of the conduct. code of conduct and yeah. all that and right. he always was against the fighting the man in the system, uh, just a skinny rat tail fucking white kid from North Seattle like, you know has there's a video of him uh, with his dad trying to teach him how to ride a bike and him falling into a ditch that I still am trying to submit to America's Funniest Home Videos <laughs> because literally to this day. I have not laughed harder in my entire life. And I, I'll go on record saying that. And if I had the footage to cut to right now, we wouldn't even continue the podcast. Literally, his dad, it's the first time he's teaching him how to ride a bike by himself. And they're on this like dirt path and there's a ditch to the left and he's behind him and the dad's like, come on, come on. He's chasing him with the camera. Come on, Dwight, you can do it, come on. And then finally he gets away on his own. He goes, yes, yes, oh yes, yes. And then all of a sudden he just starts wobbling. He goes, oh no. And then he just shakes and he's about 30 feet away and he goes, uh, and then he just... And it's not, I'm not saying he falls into a ditch that's like four feet deep. It's like he fell into a black hole and his son's gone. <laughs> right. And basically. He's the, Jessica down the, the well. The, 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 the bike gods were just like, he wasn't ready. We're taking him until he's ready to go without a dude. It was, I mean, and could you see him fall? You know, when you see someone fall, if it's a short distance and they hit Falls the ground. Falls are always funny though. But like a deep, when you can tell this kid like dive bombs and off the bike helmet flies off rat tails waving in the air oh, almost like God. waving to his dad anyway uh it's a real strong dewey. pitch for dewey yeah I gotta tell you. <laughs> yeah it's so real... very dewey he was living his life in the uh, in the dewey fashion but so he signed instead of dwight angle don't agree da but still made it in right. a cursive <laughs> so I don't he, agree with so that and I was supposed to be and we had this whole plan because I was going to be his vice president and still ended up doing it but just the guy who ended up winning because Dwight didn't run because they looked at it and they were like does this say don't agree and he was like and hey man lie right just yeah. be like just no that's the my race, name bro. and then just the know race. inside your heart yeah. that you don't agree right. but he goes maybe it does and they're like you're not running and he's like damn it <laughs> <laughs> So Jeremiah, cancel the poster. <laughs> cancel the poster, Ron. Let's back that campaign truck up. Oh, we didn't have a truck to begin with. Okay, cool. <laughs> oh, this is high school, and no one has any uh, sort of campaign funds. So Jeremiah Fulford Foster, say that ten times fast. Say, say you it get again. to be I his can't running say mate. What? Jeremiah Fulford, Fulford Foster. Foster. That's tough. Bro. Uh, wins by default, and I was his J double F. <laughs> 
He was, yeah. He uh, he was an offensive lineman. We were both offensive linemen. Du- during two football. F's in offensive. How yeah. about that? Yeah. Look at this. He was a, a theme. Now works at Costco. I think he's like upper management. Climbed the ranks. It was one two of those O's things. in Costco. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, he uh, he was so not a didn't have anything politically um, compelling about him, and he but he won, and he but he he's a smart dude, and so but, but did he run against someone or no, he just get it because Dewey got was it. out? So I think he didn't win. Everyone kind of thought Dwight was going to win because you know again even in high school and even now, man, it's a popularity contest. So it was Dwight against Jeremiah, Jeremiah, but then Dwight was out and no one else stepped up to no run against. Stepped so up, by dude. default, he yep. gets a, he gets yep the win, yeah, the W. Well, and, wins uh, a win, bro. yeah, it wins a win, dude. And Jerry, uh, he took it, man. And, and I told him, and I ended up being vice president. And I go, Jerry, look, man, I go, I'm going to run the assemblies. I'm gonna do the student council shit. I'm gonna run the stuff because, like, you know, you got you're the brains. I'm the fun. You know, I just try to lay it out. And he was like, Yeah, I mean, you know. And he was kind of a pushover. Here's a great pushover example. He worked at Hollywood Video in high school. Do you remember Hollywood? Yeah, hell yeah. Blockbuster adjacent, right? Right. In my eyes, better. But that's just because it was closer, so it was more accessible. Two it's, L's, two O's. Yeah, and yeah. Lot, I mean, a lot of the shit's going on here right Hollywood now. Hollywood video is where I saw my first set of <laughs> uh, tits without a bra. It's um. Well, he would get you the videos. Well, no, no. I, a mom came in that went. There was a mom <laughs> in the high school just no, <laughs> live in the flesh. You saw it on a f- no, oh dude. My. Just walked in one day. <laughs> and I remember being in like freshman year, maybe or maybe even eighth grade, and just looking over and being like, "How can I see those through the shirt right now?" And just literally such a pervy eighth grader, like definitely went down aisles that I had no business being right. in yeah. just to kind of like get a second glance and double down on the, on the, on I mean, the they were just, D's. you know, I'm not going to say the name of the mom, but like, man, it was crazy. And, um, definitely like, definitely probably tried to become better friends with that kid too. Just to, as Fuck a way to like yeah. maybe get invited over for a sleepover. You guys got a pool? Yeah. <laughs> swimming a lot during the Your mom sleep- doesn't swim naked, does she? I mean, <laughs> your mom doesn't make, she makes, she makes food when you guys eat, right? You know, well, you're so horny as a boy in eighth, ninth grade that a one piece will do it for you. You don't yeah. give a shit. Let alone mom nips, just, yeah. you know. Mom boobs. Mom boobs. Uh, there's got to be a band out there called Mom Boobs, there should right? Be. Uh, so, so he works at Hollywood Video. And I remember I rented this game, MLB 2001, senior mm-hmm. year of high school just the most fun baseball game you could want to play. It was like, you know, they had other uh, baseball games, but this one just, for whatever reason, the grab, it was so fun. My buddies and I would, would, uh, would play it uh, after school so much. And, uh, and I had kept it for, I'd say, it was over a year now, right? And, uh, and Jerry, one day I walk in and he's just like, hey man, um, and again, president, vice president, you know, we'd done an assembly that day. And so he's after school in there and, and, he, and I'm uh, getting some videos and, and looking for my friend's mom's boobs and, and I'm like, uh, hey, man, uh, getting going to get this. And he goes, I can't let you get this, Adam. And I go, why? He goes, you've had MLB 2001 for. Like- it's 2003. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, pretty much. Pretty much. The, I can't remember the exact duration of time that I had it, but it was it was way overdue. Like, if there were late fees, because Hollywood Video just, there, it came a time where they I think they were both kind of, you know, to stay competitive, we're like, hey, now we don't do late fees, which I guess that was going to happen at some point. But also, like, now you're not getting anything back. If right. you're just basically, hey, it's the honor system. We're giving it away. Yeah. So so he goes, you got to bring it back, dude. I go, Jerry, man, that's not going to happen. And he goes, come on, man. <laughs> he come on, man's me. And I go, dude, it's really fun. And he goes, dude, a lot of these games are fun, man. But you got to, you rented it. You got to bring it back. He goes, that's my ass on this one and i'm like dude you know it's it's not gonna happen chair i really like the game and he goes so do a lot of other people which is why they come in asking for it but i have to tell him that you have it i go you don't tell him it's me do you? he goes no i'm not gonna rat you out i go and i'm not gonna rat you out for being a good dude so let me keep Prez. the game for a couple more years <laughs> couple more years <laughs> never and then he, and then he, again speaking Wait to him the, out. his pushover uh, qualities he just goes please and i go nah <laughs> And he goes, all right. <laughs> and then he charges me for the. Listen, I'm in the bottom of the seventh, and I got a no hitter going. It ain't happening today, Jerry. You know what I'm saying? I'm deep in the season, dude. I'm looking to make some trades. Uh, but uh, but yeah, dude, that was so. So we ran the assemblies together and everything, and it was it was super fun. And then he did, to his credit, uh, gave like one of the the 
most emotional, like, you know, the, the senior, uh, the graduation basically, right? And they show, uh, I think it's called Cane Lotta. I don't know if it is like that across the board. But, you know, they play a senior slideshow, pictures, and, and it's emotional, man. Like, you, I remember going to Playing it as... Playing Goo Goo Dolls music on there oh, yeah, and yeah. shit. Yeah. And I do it the way I see me. <laughs> and just the pictures, flag. like, just slow cross-dissolving shots of this, oh, and then into one the of, like, this. And then some hot girl eating sport. spaghetti, like, <laughs> yeah. what? Where'd this sauce come from? And you're like, I'm never going to see that bitch again. You know? <laughs> is that bitch in our grade? Yeah, I don't know. She's not, that. is she? No, she already graduated. <laughs> they just put her picture up because her dad owns the school. Uh, you know, But uh, he gave a really heartfelt speech, and I remember like being really taken aback because he had... <laughs> there were times even during student council meetings where he'd be stumbling over his words, and I would just step up and just grab the mic and go, I'll take it from here, Jared. So I think <laughs> what we're trying to do... Look, pencil sharpeners. Do they need to get upgraded? For sure. Like, <laughs> We're going to restructure home ec, okay? <laughs> I got plans for the I whole did. West Wing of this building. I did, dude. I was, but again, it was just like all a performance opportunity. Study hall is going to be six credits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, dude. But, uh, but anyway, so yeah, I think he's killing it at Costco now, though. So Good for him. Good for Jerry. Well, uh, good for you for being here. Thank you very much. And before we get into this yeah. further, please, I want you to promote yourself. Yeah, sorry. All I just about you. Jumped I'm into trying that, to make man. this about you. That's my problem, though, with you. Also, when you're around just great uh, chatters like yourself, I mean, you're truly one of the best. It's like, and I know you appreciate that, you're too, of man. any sort of deep cut story. And those things I have never, I, I mean, I can't even remember the last time I've said Jeremiah Fulford Foster. <laughs> I, I can understand why, though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? So you even just saying, or the Dewey thing, like that just, man, that set off, you know. I love I think it. our brains work like that, too, where it's like there's so many, you know. And, and I try to, I think, probably partially bring those things up just to, uh, like, challenge myself to be like, do I still remember? How far back does my brain truly go? Yeah. And, do and I how still, deep does that memory go? Yeah, man, because yeah. you want to think that, like, you got all that stuff and that Hollywood video, uh, you know, chamber of time, like locked away somewhere, just waiting to be uh, opened up. I definitely will bring it up to him if I ever see him. Hopefully, he's watching. I know he's a fan of comedy. There's What's up, some... JWL? <laughs> yeah. uh, but I'm on uh, Instagram and Twitter at Adam Ray Comedy. Uh, my website is adamraycomedy.com. All my tour dates are there. Uh, pretty full through the uh, rest of the summer and then um, uh, into the fall. And my album is called Read the Room. It's on Spotify, Amazon, uh, Google Play, iTunes. I actually, just put out. Uh, full video. I did a three camera shoot on the red of the uh, album. You at did the, it on the uh, red. Yeah, Very at the nice. uh, at the punchline in San Fran, mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorite clubs ever. And That's a great club. I'm yeah. glad they're working that out. I, dude, I know it was th that. W this would have been probably the last. Like, I mean, yeah, for sure, album. But uh, I just I love that room. It's so intimate, and it's San Fran's is such a, a cool, uh, accepting city, and and uh, and comedy people. And I love. Look, who doesn't? We both gotten to play like really cool, bigger venues, but like, I don't know, man. When you when it really comes down to it, like, you know, two to three hundred is like real special, man. Like that's just especially in in the punchline, it's real. Everyone's right up on you, yeah, right on top. And you low and, ceiling, yeah, dude. And you either room. are you get such an immediate like um, response to whether or not you're connecting or not. Yeah. And and um, anyway, so the full video now uh, as of. Um, as of today is, is up on my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Adam Ray 24. Cause I think I made the YouTube channel when I was 24 and I don't know how to change it. Um, but also <laughs> King Griffey Jr.'s number was 24. Yeah. So there you go. So maybe, maybe people can, uh, you know, think that that's why. Well, I appreciate you coming Thanks on for having here. Me. I own oh, the podcast about last night yeah, with Brad please. Williams. Uh, that's on iTunes and, and everywhere, Spotify and, uh, and uh, if you don't know who Brad is, uh, check it out. Uh, look under your table right now. He could be there. Um, he had a great episode here. You, dude, he crushed it. You Brad's another it. guy that's just got stories and, and chats for days. And yeah. a good yes-ander, you know? Yeah. Like, we'll be in elevators, Brad and I. And if you don't know Brad, it's a little person. Uh, and uh, I, like how I, I always do this for some reason. I could just say it. But I'm, like, even times I'll be like, Brad. And I always do, like, do that. And then sometimes I, I even, I'm like, well, that's generous. Brad, you know? And I go down lower. <laughs> But uh, right. we'll be in elevators just to fuck with people, and I'll uh, look at them sometimes and be like, I'm so proud of you, son. And you hear, feel, see people just kind of like <laughs> looking down, and then he just, he'll, he'll just smile and look up at me and go, I love you, Dad. Why do I have a full beard? <laughs> You're mature. Your friends are jealous. People just kind of... <clears throat>
Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, that kid, is that kid really seven? <laughs> Why is he holding the car keys? <laughs> um, so yeah, that's it, man. Well, I, I w- I've been wanting to have you on, and I, I, you know, I ask everybody to send some stuff ahead of time. Yeah. And you sent some great stuff, but there was one thing I wanted to ask you about. Yeah. Because I saw this really, I thought it was just this beautiful post. Uh, I believe it was on Instagram, and it was such so moving. It was about your dad, and just. I, you know, I, I, again, I don't know everybody's backstory, but for whatever reason, well, I've had you on the podcast on the crafties and everything. We yeah. just never really got into that. Yeah. And I didn't know that you had that sort of a strange relationship with your dad. So, right. um, why don't you take us back to the beginning? You're originally obviously from Seattle. And- yeah. Grew up in uh, shoreline, Washington, Lake forest park is really where it is. But shoreline, I think has got a little bit more clout as far as like city wise. Uh, but it's like 25 minutes North of the city. And, um, Grew up there and, uh, you know, had a pretty, you know, normal, I just start crying right away. (laughs) (laughs) Cleared his throat right up. Had a pretty, (laughs) oh, God. You know, uh, I had a couple friends, uh, you know, Jeremiah Fulford Foster. If he does that, the dog, go tight on him. Go tight on him if he cries. We get a slow zoom if I clear my throat again. (laughs) Holy shit. It no. always makes me laugh where those things hit you. Like, I had a pretty good... Oh, mm. my. I, I, the timing was so... I had a pretty good <laughs> childhood. Uh, uh, yeah, oh, cut away. Uh, cut to some <laughs> clips of my friend's mom's boobs in the public. <laughs> public boobs. Cut to, cut to public boobs. Um, uh, yeah, so folks were... Um, you know, I never remember hearing my folks fight or... You know, I, you, it's so funny. I've now got a chance to look back at like old VHS tapes of like birthday parties that my mom and dad threw for my sister and I like at six and, and seeing like weird potato sack races in the backyard. And we had like a little tree house and you know, my dad, uh, still a doctor, you know, um, I'm 75, I think right now, just turned 75 was a big cardiovascular surgeon, uh, in downtown Seattle and, uh, doing, op- I mean, open heart surgeries were his forte. I mean, just a crazy, just and a, and a great bedside, just a killer doc. And so uh, I don't think, I mean, we definitely didn't have like, you know, a boat and shit like that. But you said a killer making... doc. I'm sitting here. <laughs> Hilarious. That's the last thing I want. Yeah. What's this guy's nickname, a killer. Man? Dude. Killer. I'm like, uh, like, can we get another cardiologist up in this moment? <laughs> no, he just, it's hand eye coordinate. Like he just, people loved him. His, he, um, he just was great. Like highly as I got older and, and learning just how like he respected he can was in the medical field. Did he, is there ever been a moment where you were with him or did he ever told you where he ran into someone who he's life he saved and they're like, Oh my God. Oh Dr. yeah. Ray. Oh yeah. For real. Oh yeah, dude. You and you witnessed even, that? No, he just told me. And even now he tells me he works at a, a VA clinic in Salem, Oregon and, and, uh, just the amount of like, he just loves it, you know, which is why he just doesn't want to stop practicing. He truly just, he still has the patience and the eye hand coordination. Yeah, man. Well, he's not doing surgery. So it's more, he's now, you know, uh, I guess general practitioner, you would call it or, uh, but so, so, um, but he's just got so much great experience and so he's just so good with people. And, uh, and the way that he has just helped, uh, a lot of these, um, you know, vets and, uh, and even non vets and some of the emails and texts they send him and stories they, that he'll tell me um, of them just, uh, you know, coming back after he's gotten them, you know, on a more proper path. And uh, it's cool. It's really, it fulfills them like none other. And, um, and, you know, you want that for your folks at this stage. You're just like, you want them to be, you know, happy. And, and, um, and so, uh, so yeah, so him and my mom, you know, I think they were married 20 years. I think my mom's like always said like, you know, 10 of them were pretty good. And then, uh, they, you know, just got into it. Dad working late nights uh, at the hospital, you know, they start to fight this and that. And then um, dad ends up uh, meeting my now stepmom at the hospital. You know, things happen, you know, and um, that was, you know, I think that was sex is what that this was. I'm and, pretty uh, sure. I, I figured yeah. that out. And uh, new family starts. Uh, they also this was about at like eight or nine, which I don't even think you certain things you don't even. It's not like I'd seen an episode of TV where divorce happened right. or or infidelity or anything like that. So you don't really know. But do they sit down and have a conversation with so you? So I remember, all? yeah, I think there were some signs too. Like my sister, a couple years older than me, was always a little more uh, in tune to what was happening, and which is why it's taken her longer to kind of re, repatch things with um, with my dad. Uh, I was a little more aloof, so I was kind of like, oh, we still get to see him. 
Why don't we just go to a different house? All right, we get two houses. <laughs> Fucking right, yeah. life rules. <laughs> Um, yeah. you know, sandwiches in two different bedrooms. And, uh, so, but then once you get over to like your dad's new spot and it's, and once it's all real and you're like, oh, there's my stepmom and, and her kid. And then so you're she like, she had a child, he had a child already. and then they had two together, which are now, um, you know, half brothers, but I just call them brothers. Cause yeah, they, cause are. That's all they are. Yeah. And it's like, I spent a lot of time around them in their growing up years and, and, uh, and we've kind of lived similar lives as far as going through a lot at a young age you know i mean you know we don't even have enough time for me to dive into some of the true insanity of all that uh, that kind of has transpired but um uh going to a different house and seeing my dad with a new family yeah that was when it kind of hit and then even seeing my mom starting to date is when it was all like oh wow this is like shit is different man and you get so accustomed as a kid to just being like having my folks and right. even if you know, I don't, I mean, I always remember having a fine relationship with my dad growing up and, and taking me to all my sports and doing this and, and, um, uh, mom always the, the, the true crusher, I think, but dad, I never felt like I didn't have a dad up until eight or nine. So was your sister the one that would come in and be like, you know, mom and dad are having problems and start telling you, things no, she that... would just kind of cry and <clears throat> yell at them, I think for fighting. And then just, so they did start the fight toward the end there. Oh yeah. 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 And, um, and then, and then they get divorced. But do they? Do you remember them talking to you about how things are going to be different at all? Not really. I just remember the the move. And again, I I always. Do you mean your dad actually moving out? You yeah. Remember that? Yeah, for sure. And that yeah, that was like same kind of drive away. It was like real crazy because it was just like. But again, I I think I I've always had this glass half full approach to life. A I think just because I don't know I just uh, you know just didn't let negativity really uh, make its way uh, make its way in. But I think also by default, like seeing at an early age, even the way it was affecting my mom and my sis, I had a weird like, you know, uh, understanding of like, oh, I'm kind of the dude now. And then my grandpa even told me that at like nine. He's like, you're the man of the house, you know? And I was like, Fucking, that's a lot of How pressure. Far away you I'm, live. I'm trying to enjoy these fucking handy snacks. Can <laughs> yeah, we fucking real, can lower you, the bar? On... Can you come over and be the fucking man? <laughs> yeah, yeah. God, you are a man. <laughs> How far away do you live? You can Grandpa. drive, Grandpa. <laughs> Can't you be here in like ten minutes if shit yeah, goes down? Yeah. Well, they lived in Oklahoma, which my mom almost moved us to because that now she's just kind of like. Well, that's what I want to ask you. Did you stay in the house, the same house? No, at we least moved. At that, you we did. Moved. You... And the house was cool, man. We had a big playroom in a backyard, yeah, and like that was, that was really that that was the bummer, dude. Yeah, and. uh but we moved not too far away, and so I still was in the same school district and had my same my same buddies. And but my mom had an opportunity to move us to Oklahoma, and she almost did to be closer to her folks. They would help help financially too, and because um, then my mom started doing the three four single mom job situation and trying to raise my sister and I. And then my was sister, your dad not? Did he just man just not associate all together? Yeah, I mean it was we would go to his place every other weekend and again that's why it was like just seeing the new situation and and i just immediately innately was like i'm gonna just try to make the best of this like st again like still get to be around him s go to his house like and i just would see how uh awful my sister was kind of taking it and how she would kind of treat my stepmom and and even my dad a little and i was like or again by default i gotta be the the one that's like not having a problem with this so i'd be like oh renee my stepmom just like oh, it's so good to see like just so happy and peppy and to my dad and just trying to get to know my new brother and just like be really, I mean, literally at like nine, just being like, everything's fucking this dude, this is great. Like, you know, like things didn't work with my mom and dad, but like, it wasn't like, but it works with you guys. Like this is, this was, it's supposed to happen like this, you know, like truly just thinking that way. And, uh, and it didn't like eat at me to do that. Cause I felt like I was helping. And also it was easier and I think healthier to think like that. Cause and I think that I has say, that is very mature to even even oh, if man. you're not believing it in your soul to yeah. think that way yeah. to get you through something like that. I think is is really wise. Yeah, it's, I mean it's it's definitely bled into who I am today, and I think is a blessing and a curse because there's probably times that I, you know, have probably and I don't even want to say like suppressed or buried a lot of all of that stuff because my mom did try <laughs> to get me into um, counseling like shortly after. We heard it in the throat clear. <laughs> 
<laughs> we heard it all in the throat clear, bro. <laughs> you didn't we even heard it out of the, the gate clear, dude. You were still in the gate pulling the horse around. By the way, <laughs> if we heard it in the throat clear, isn't some R&B ballad that's about some I guy. I heard it in your throat clear. <laughs> I see it in your eyes. <laughs> the emotion's getting heavy. <laughs> I'm going to eat these fries. Yeah. <laughs> That's the music video. It's the person sitting across from the guy singing. Sad. And he's just like, <laughs> if you're going to keep being crazy and oh bringing tears to this lunch, <laughs> then I'm going to take your fry. <laughs> And probably skip next week's brunch. Uh, yeah. Uh, so he, he, uh, my dad was just, you know, not, he didn't like talk to me about it all and try to like be like, hey, this is what's happening. And this is, he just also was kind of like, I could also even get a sense from him that it was like, like even when he, so you, just, you were thrown in the deep end. Yeah. It was you. He was trying to figure out what the fuck he was doing. Dude, and yeah. You were trying to figure out what he, everything was going oh, on. Oh, yeah, dude. I think even getting pregnant um, caught him off guard. And I remember my mom telling me later in life that even him telling her that, because I would see them when he would drop us back off. They would. Yeah, did they talk? Man, that was they, always. It's so funny how you can tap back into that. And I appreciate you making me do that. But yeah. it's. Um, <clears throat> there was a. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get Jeremiah Fulford Foster on the phone? <laughs> Can I get some MLB 2001 on the screen? It'll just be his campaign poster while you cry behind it. I can see it in your eyes. I heard it in your throat, throat clear. clear. It's all dude. packed in that little, huh, little <laughs> half a second moment. It's all packed in there. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy, dude. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh. All right. So when they, when you guys drop off and dude, that they, that they exchange paths at games at whatever they see. Yeah, each dude. Other. It's like their moment because they. Oh, I mean, it's so sad to even think about now. Like that they, they were. It was so contentious, and it's like, man, that they've been together that long, and now they're not, and like. You don't take that into consideration as a kid. You're yeah, just like you're only yeah, nine go, years. They're twenty. Yeah, dude. It was, it didn't work. So you're just like, oh, cool. Like again, you're trying to kind of make sense of what's happening and and going to that therapy thing. And this guy had like a mini basketball hoop in the corner, and he was a, you know, got heavy set dude with a beard, and he'd sit behind the desk, and he was just like, my mom would drop me off. She's like, I, you just need to try to do that. And I was like, I don't want to talk to some stranger about what's happening. Like I'm fine. The guy's got and, me uh, doing layup drills. Yeah. for Christ's sake. I don't know how that's helpful. Before I even open up. <laughs> From the heart, he's having me fucking triple threat and chest pass. My, this guy's not a real basketball coach. And so I would, though, want to play. I wouldn't want to talk to him because I'd shoot hoops. And then finally, I remember I walked in one day and I shot the little like uh, rubber ball or the little uh, foam ball and it bounced off the thing right to him in his chair and he's caught it and he goes, now, I'll let you keep shooting hoops if we talk about what's going on. <laughs> I'll never forget that, dude. Yeah. And I just was like, <clears throat> like, and then I remember, and I sat down defiant and was just like, Nah, man, you're not getting in here. You know, I just, I give him very, you know, generic answers of just like. That's the yeah, kind of shit I would say to priests for confession. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been speeding yeah. a little bit yeah. too much. Because you're awesome. just, it's, it's uncomfortable. And even as a kid, you're just like something normal about me opening up to this guy. Right. And I don't want to. And again, I, it was, it was almost shining a light on it and making it seem more severe. But you were in there by yourself. You'd be dropped yeah. off, huh? Yeah. Cause my sis just didn't want to go. And, but and not, you know, no parent would stay. No, my mom <clears> would be outside, you know, and, and, but it was for the kid to, uh, to, my mom was like, I, it's also like as a parent, I think she's just like, I mean, you can attest. You're just like, I got to do something here. I need. Yes. Yeah, so so this I, is probably the move to. But put I was. In. I was you too. I was. We had to go to a therapist as a oh, yeah. kid too. Yeah. It sucked. Yeah. And you, you're like, who the fuck is this person? And I didn't want to talk about it because I, again, I, I had felt like I was dealing with it okay. I was enjoying the fact that I had made a choice about just kind of being the rock, more or less, and and not, um, uh, and not letting it get to me because a, it was healthier for me, and b, it was helping a little bit to be. A fun and upbeat and there were other things that would would get to me later that like the mom dating thing but anyway to speak to their exchange real quick like yeah they uh my dad would drop us off and sometimes they would chat a bit and you know i i don't think my pops was really um you know financially was uh could come to the aid of my mom for you know child support and stuff and so that was you know obviously an issue and um 
Sometimes it'd be a, a short exchange. And sometimes I remember just straight up yelling. And it was, that was crazy. Cause again, I'd never see the, seen the fighting right. live. Um, so I was just like, whoa, like this is, and I would just go inside cause I just didn't want to see it. It was just like, uh, it was just like, whoa. I thought it was like, it was like, you know, something you only heard about, like that the, they were fighting. Now you're seeing it. It's like, you know, it's like you hear about the Playboy Mansion as a kid. And then you go and you're like, I did not expect there to be this many X, you know, um, you know, uh, and then insert funny improv, you know, but there's, uh, <laughs> but um, we we'll, can cut something. We'll cut something in for you. Don't worry. We'll cut something. Um, <laughs> I had something on the tip of my tongue I and I just didn't want to go with it. I didn't want to go with it. <laughs> I was going to say uh, extras from Angels in the Outfield, but it just didn't, uh, you know. Because I think back in the day, anybody could go to the mansion, right? Yeah, right. If you knew, yeah. Um, Adrian Brody was probably there before he was Adrian Brody. Right, yeah, right? I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so I would just go inside to avoid all that. But it truly didn't get to me again until seeing my mom start to date. Because then it's, again, then it was real. And, and how long after, how old are you when you're seeing that? I mean, dude, it was, it was I want to say maybe a couple years. And again, my mom would tell me later in life as we would chat about this, which... Gave me a, um, it made me feel really good about the fact that I was so, you know, again, as uh, by default, trying to just be upbeat and be there for my mom. And, and, and I would, again, seeing my sister start to have trouble at school and, and kind of get involved with some of the wrong um, crowds, I would, again, try to come home and clean the house and get everything of the, you know, dishes or, or whatever and do all my homework and just not be a problem child at all because. My mom was going through all this, and then also my sister was starting to be a troublesome kid and and be in a room a lot and not and just sometimes disappear. Excuse me for a couple of days, and uh, and so I just would try to be uh, steady. And and then when she started dating, you know, later in life in high school, I was all for it because in high school my mom and I'd be sitting there, just my mom and I. My sister went away to a girls' school for a little bit, and I'm jumping around, but. I would see my mom and I, I'd be leaving for a party on a Friday night in high school. My mom would be sitting there watching TV and I just was like, all right, I'm not going out. I was like, mom, let's go see a movie. Or, let's hang out. What are you watching? And we just hang out because I like, I just felt bad. I was like, I, I can't, uh, you know. And at this point too, my mom and I had gotten to be more friends because as a kid and even in high school, you don't see your parents as people. You're just like, you're, you know, and also I'm like 16, 17, 18, like bouncing between being a man and needing my mom. So I'm like, can you wash my jerseys and make my lunch? Because I'm going to go in early for practice. But then like, give me some space because I'm a man, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like I'm going to have chicks over maybe at some point if you let me with the door closed. It'll be, all right, open, but whatever. Um, and so, so I would not go out a lot towards the end of high school because I just, I was just like, man, she doesn't deserve this and this sucks. And I, uh, I don't, and it was a lot more visible to me of like the, emotional impact of her by herself i mean oh so just so sad and so when she met my stepdad finally i was, well, I was so, gonna say good for your mom for going out because it couldn't it, it, no and she just needed to at some point i'm sure my grandparents but even to gave watch her, your husband of 20 years oh, just leave and then go start a new family right and away then, by the way yeah, yeah. right it's not away like they divorced and then right. they both did their thing and maybe they had already had this relationship at work think of any breakup you you know you you have your times where you're I mean, at least for me, it's like I, I remember in in uh, in all three of my kind of uh, uh, situations that that ended. It was, you know, texting and calling and even meeting back up and just and and trying to because you just you you let go, but you don't want to completely let go, and you're trying to transition into you know the end of it. So it's and it's different for everybody. Whether you go uh, you know cold turkey and just cut it all off, which I think you know is probably the best way, but you know, in this day and age with, you know, all the social media and looking at people's shit. Oh, it's, um, I yeah. mean, Brent Morin's got great bits about it with his ex and just seeing, you know, like back in the day, I think he was talking about how, you know, with Instagram, like the way he'll look at pictures and see her with dudes and saw her, her with a dude. And that'd be the equivalent of like going standing outside of her house and like looking through the window and who's that guy. And then like yelling through the window, which is like liking it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, it's brilliant. <laughs> uh, Brent Morin's the man. Let's take a quick break from the honeydew to tell you about our first sponsor, ExpressVPN. If you believe that you're not being snooped on or that nobody cares about your online data, well then, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but you are wrong. Because you listen to my show, you're obviously smart enough to understand that your privacy is under attack. Hackers, governments, ad companies, and ISPs are all gobbling up your data, like all of it. 
That's why I recommend getting the software that I trust to protect my online activity, ExpressVPN. Their apps use powerful encryption to secure your data. ExpressVPN runs in the background of your computer or phone, and then you use the internet just like you normally would. You download the app, you click to connect, and voila, you're protected. I never go online without ExpressVPN, and you shouldn't either. ExpressVPN is the fastest VPN I've tried. It costs less than 7 bucks a month, and it comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. ExpressVPN uses new cutting-edge technology called Trusted Server to make sure there's no logs of what you do online. It's time to stop the hackers, big brother, and internet companies from grabbing all your data. Take back your online privacy like I did with ExpressVPN. Protect your online activity today and find out how you can get three months free at expressvpn.com slash honeydew. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash honeydew for three months free with a one-year package. Visit expressvpn.com slash honeydew to learn more. Our next sponsor is Upstart. And as most of us have found out the hard way, getting into debt is easy. Getting out is hard, especially if your FICO score isn't great. Thankfully, now there's Upstart.com, the revolutionary lending platform that knows you're more than just your credit score and offers smarter interest rates to help you pay off high interest credit card debt. Uh, when I was in college, man, the first thing I did was get a credit card and then I had to live off of it. Next thing you know, Boom, you're $40,000 in debt and you ain't getting out of it. So Upstart goes beyond the traditional FICO score when assessing your credit worthiness. They actually reward you based on your education and job history in the form of a smarter interest rate. Upstart believes you're more than just your credit score. They believe in you and they understand that. They make it fast, simple, and easy to check your rate in just a few minutes without affecting your credit score. The best part? Once the loan is approved, most people get their funds the very next business day. That's the next day. Over 200,000 people have used Upstart to pay off credit cards, student loans, fund their wedding, or to make a large purchase. Free yourself from the burden of high interest credit card debt by consolidating everything into one monthly payment with Upstart. See why Upstart is ranked number one, number one in their category with over 300 businesses on Trustpilot and hurry to upstart.com slash honeydew to find out how low your Upstart rate is. Checking your rate only takes a few minutes and will not affect your credit. That's upstart.com slash honeydew. Our last sponsor is Hims, guys, and specifically guys. With age comes wisdom, but getting older can be a downer, you know what I'm saying? Especially in one area specifically. 40% of men by age 40 struggle from not being able to get and maintain an erection. Do not go to weird solutions. Definitely don't do nothing, especially when you can turn instead to medicine and science. You don't need expensive pills. You don't need to be getting injections where no man wants an injection. I'm telling you, these pills work. We have people here in the studio to take them. They swear by them, especially right over there in the booth. They love them. Be wise. Check out hymns. They absolutely work. Forhims.com is a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness for men. Hims connects you with real licensed doctors and FDA-approved pharmaceutical products to treat ED. Well-known generic equivalents to name brand prescription to help you combat ED. Prescription solutions are backed by science and they're made more affordable. You'll see results where other treatments will fall short. Stop worrying about multiple in-office doctor visits. There's no painful injections like other treatments. It's super easy. You can answer questions about your medical history and chat with a doctor for confidential review. If approved by the doctor, products are shipped directly to your door, and being your best means performing your best. It's erectile without the dysfunction, you know what I'm saying? Hard made easy. Say hello to your little friend. Try Hims for a month today for just $5. We'll get you started for just 5 bucks while supplies last. Prescription products are subject to doctor approval, and they do require an online consultation with a physician who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. See website for full details and safety information. Don't be foolish. Go look at that website. Get the full details. Read the safety information. This could cost hundreds if you went in person to the doctor's office or pharmacy. Go to forhims.com slash honeydew. That's F O R H I M S dot com slash honeydew. Forhims.com slash honeydew. And now back to the do. And but so so I uh I just didn't um 
think that my mom would maybe date ever. And then also it starts to happen. And these guys are coming over and you're like, hey, what's up, man? And they're like, hey, can I shoot some hoops with you? Like, can, can we, this guy named Dennis, he's like, can I get, hey, you mind if I pop, pop up a few basket shots? And I was like, oh boy. <laughs> and, uh, and I, and again, trying to be nice kid <laughs> yeah, right. being like, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, man. Like, yeah. And then, he, and I remember handing him the ball. It was like out of a movie, like out of some like Jonathan Taylor Thomas, Ted Danson. Wasn't that getting even with dad? Wasn't that the movie? Oh, I don't remember There's a movie with one, JTT yeah. and I think Chevy Chase and Ted Danson where one of those guys is a stepdad and they go to camp. I'm paraphrasing. If this isn't the fucking it synopsis, somebody write that. Ted Danson, Chevy Chase, JTT. Mary fuck kill. And so, uh, so uh, he, I pass him the ball and he grabs it and he just goes, ah, and he spins it. And I'm like, okay. And then he literally was like, and I was like, oh, God, he just no. He flung it up like There's that. There's no way this guy can be in my life post yeah. today. Right. <laughs> if he's ever driving me to school or a game and trying to mix it up with other dads. Hey, you guys yeah, also, I was bit. just shooting basket shots with my new son. Basket Don't shot. say that. <laughs> and then I remember. <laughs> It was so embarrassing that I remember I told my mom, I was like, he shoots weird. And she was like, what? And I was like, you can't date this guy. He shoots weird. And, and my mom again, like, she's like, I need, like, you know, and, and even just trying to say something to her. Yeah, I need, I, I'm trying to, this isn't easy for me either. I'm trying to put myself back out there. And then she dated this guy named uh, Harvey Greenberg. Shout out to Harvey. I'll say, his, I'll say his full name because just Harvey doesn't do it justice. Greenberg, yeah, that's you're a like, problem. Jew? Uh, so he... <laughs> So, uh, good guy, let us watch the Blue Angels on his roof one summer, I remember, which was dope, and was, and was chill, and had like a good vibe. It was the first guy where I was like, and he came up and gave me a good handshake, and didn't try to say anything. Again, Dennis with the fucking, you know. Basket shots. Yeah, the basket shots, and the weird, he was, he was trying too hard, yeah. which as a kid, you don't have any sort of wherewithal to, to give him benefit of the doubt. You're just like, fuck you, <laughs> for even trying, yeah, because- right. You're trying too hard and you're like, ease into this. But also I think it was the first guy, so I just wasn't on board with any, with any choice. Harvey was all right. There's a guy named Richard who was a glass blower. Mom. And this guy, by the way, this is great. I've never gone through the lineage of my mom's dating This is great. Past. So wait, what was, um, I hope my stepdad what was George basket tunes shots? into this Do you remember episode. what he did? Basket shots you was a- his um, occupation? Damn, I don't, but I do remember, oh God, this is so fucked up, dude. <laughs> I called him Marshmallow Face. <laughs> Why? That's a huge thing now. You were way ahead of your time, bro. There's a guy that wears a head. <laughs> he had a, and look, my mom is an attractive gal and, and fun and, I mean, pudding. Like, she, she's always just, I, I, you know, even looking back and seeing old pictures, I'm like, she was a fucking catch and she, she rules and she crushed it as a mom, probably cr crushed it as a wife. I know she's crushing it now. So at that point, I'm just like, oh, we truly are just jumping in without, uh, without any, like, I think for the first couple of go arounds, standards were not a concern. And this guy, again, I think showed her, uh, showed some interest, but like he had a really fucking just puff, like he looked like a marshmallow. And I remember calling him marshmallow face. I think that was one of the last times I saw him. You said it to him? Yeah. <laughs> but that was before, <laughs> that was before. Here's why I even had the chutzpah to come at him verbally. He was the first guy I saw my mom kiss. That wasn't my dad. Uh, and dude, that... Where was it? In my bed. And so... <laughs> I, I like, Good night, everybody. <laughs> I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> You're trying to sleep. Roll over, man. Scoot over. Come on, Mars, man. You get my pillow all sticky. You get my pillow all sticky. You threw a shitty bounce pass on the court. At least you could give me an alley-oop here. At least what's his nuts could do basket shots for Christ's sake. No, no, they were um, <laughs> where were they? outside outside in the uh, on the, <laughs> wow in the driveway where the basketball hoop was. Where were you? So talk about home court advantage. <laughs> talk, talk about the away team getting yeah, the fucking shit, getting the W. <laughs> <laughs> you don't come on our court and do that shit, motherfucker. <laughs> Whoa, dude, I'm gonna pass out from how insane that is. Where, I'm, where were you? In, in my bedroom, house? dude. The window, out the window. Imagine this being we're on the second floor of a house and you look out the window and you just like it truly is again out of a movie where the layout is just set up for driveway was for wet. tears to fall from that yeah. uh, window. Not only tears, but Pop Tart crumbs. Again, this is when I'm starting to eat my feelings and double fist Pop Tarts and dip everything in Cool Whip. If you 
if I could hold you with one hand, you're going into some Cool Whip. <laughs> <laughs> that was your rule? <laughs> if it was one hand, then it was getting dipped. <laughs> <laughs> and if you were able to be held in one and you and more than one of you came in a box, there's a chance that, that I seven. was just, you know. A couple, remember dips? Remember those granola bars Fuck dipped in yeah. chocolate? I yeah. used to just fucking this and then just cross them up and, you know? <laughs> and uh, so I had uh, every Disney afternoon snack uh, and soccer practice halftime show in my mouth. And I'm <laughs> chomping down. And I remember he brought her home. And dude, it just, I was so, man, it just was, it just got me so riled up. I was just so, I think this is when I was, A, didn't like him. And B, I go, oh, it's because I definitely held on for a long time in of hoping that my mom and dad would get back together. You did. Oh, yeah. And so, uh, yeah, I used to have like dreams about it and just, yeah, it was crazy. Uh, yeah, it was really. So you went and confronted him after the kiss or an another time? Like, did you run out of house? No, so, so, so him dropping her off and then seeing them outside my window and just. I've seen them kiss. Again, it was the first time I'd seen her even be affectionate with anybody that wasn't my dad. So it was just like devastating. I mean, I literally like zero to 60 in a heartbeat and just, I mean, window closed, <clears throat> screaming. And then, uh, and just saw, I mean, just like crying Instantly. so hard, dude. And then, and, uh, and then I would just go off on my mom. And then, like, why are you doing, like, I think they'd be like, why are you doing this to dad? Or why, like, again, with this delusional thought that, like, maybe they would patch things up, even though he had clearly moved on. So did you she, go, she's you, down, you know, you, she's like, he's, she doesn't smoke, but it's funny for the bit. But, you know, you think it's going to, he's got another family. I think that's game, set, match. It's probably what she <laughs> yeah, right, was thinking, exactly. you know. So I got to try something. Did you go downstairs and talk to your mom after Yeah, well, that? first of all, I yelled out the window. And you by did. the way, I... So yeah, so I'm probably, I think like second or third date when I see this again. First one just lost it and just, I don't even know what's going on. But also seeing them lock lips to me was like, oh, it, it's over. Like the, the chances of them getting right. back together. That's probably what really hit hard was like, oh, this is a wrap on, on uh, any sort of reconciliation. And so I remember on third or fourth date opening the window and getting up enough, uh, getting up enough courage to scream at him. Um, Cause I'd already starting to be uh, show some disdain in, in our interactions and just be a little like, like, you know, hey, how are you? I'd be like, fine. You know, just that type of shit where he's just like, ah, oh, damn it, man. All right. What do I got to do? I got to buy you a laptop. Yeah, it's a good start, you know? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and so I remember opening the window and I know a handful of swear words at what is this now? 10 maybe. So I literally remember mouthful of pop tarts, just being like you like <laughs> a weird combo in no particular order of like you boner pussy bitch like <laughs> you you <laughs> you asshole <laughs> cocksucker tits like just saying everything and i remember i remember him pulling away from my mom and looking up being like and seeing him say something to her which i can only assume was did your son just call me an asshole pussy tits <laughs> A boner AIDS bitch? <laughs> Screaming at Where the is neighbor. he learning this vernacular? Uh, and so, and then again, yeah, I would just take it out of my mom. And, and, and so that didn't work out. Richard the glass blower was dope. She got a lot of cool free glass. Going to see him do that was insane. It was kind of a cool artsy thing too that I was like, all right, this guy's like weird. So back then the <laughs> apps didn't exist. Or where's your mom no. meeting these eclectic I think there's men. like Jewish singles uh, things and then that friends. What it was? Okay. So, uh, blind dates. Who knew the glass blower? Who was that connection? I think he was I know this guy I think he down was down Jewish. here. <laughs> okay. I'm telling Look, you, he's magic with his I mouth. Mean, I'm <laughs> <telling>. <laughs> I've been noticing how little glass you got in your house. <laughs> I got a friend named Richard who could fill this place up and fill you up. That's fill not you a euphemism, up. okay? Fill your heart up. Not you fucking pervert. Not you, you want fucking that. sick pervert. Yeah. He does have a collection of glass vaginas if you'd like a mold. <laughs> but that's not he what I He can show you what he'd do to you first. <laughs> Almost like a voodoo doll, but it's right in front of your face. Dude, that guy's probably got like a whole shelf of glass dildos. These are all mine, right? It's all after me. Right? He's you probably like, got a blown color. glass voodoo doll of me <laughs> that he stabs. Every time I get stomach pains he or get the shits, it. he's probably doing it. <laughs> 
because I ended that one quickly, dude. I literally, uh, that's, that's a good pull. You got to pull the plug on the glass, Dennis, After Marshmallow Face, I got in some confidence to take down the next opponent. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it, oh, was I like, got this. it was like your rookie year making it to the playoffs, and you go back next year, and you're like, oh, this is what I got to do. <clears throat> this is what I got to do to take down the Warriors, you know? <clears throat> So I, uh, so I remember being at dinner and Richard's sitting there, and at one point I'm just doing this with like a, with my with my uh, fork. Are you at a restaurant or at your house? Oh, we're at home. Yeah. So again, I feel comfortable. I'm mm -hmm. like, my bedroom is two steps away, dude. If I really want to, I can say something and go there. What's he gonna do? Burst into my bedroom? That's fucking. You're done, dude. If you do that, if you're not my dad and you just burst into my room, oh. I'm I'm sure mom's gonna be like, okay, dude, you yeah. can't just go into kids' rooms. And so I'm doing this, and all of a sudden he's like, can you please stop? And I'm like, stop what? <laughs> Isn't that insane, dude? But again, stop what? What are, you, what are you talking about? What are you talking about, Rich? Called him Rich. His name's Richard. Whoa, dude. You're not one of his glass-blowing comrades, and you're calling him Rich? Listen, dick. <laughs> Listen, dick. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you dick. work with glass, and your motherfucking windshield's <laughs> cracked. I don't trust you. <laughs> oh, my God. God, dude. Oh my God. If I ever write a one man show about all this, you're writing <laughs> I would and love producing the you. whole thing, I would dude. Because that is so fucking funny. <laughs> I would love to. You help work you. with glass and your windshield's broke. <laughs> if I said that as a kid, dude, he probably would just step up and <laughs> go, he he it's not getting better than that, dude. I'm leaving on that. <laughs> you know what? This kid's going to outshine me in every aspect of this relationship. I'm out. He's probably got a bigger <laughs> cock than me. I'm out, dude. <laughs> I saw the way he double fist pop darts. I'm out. <laughs> so, so, uh, so he, so that that was that shortly uh, that ended shortly after that, and then, um, and then, uh, and then she met uh, this guy uh, named uh, Howard, and that one actually was cool for a while. That one was, he was a good dude. He was cool. He had almost like a Sinatra Rat Pack vibe to him. But it was cool, and he didn't try to. He was just like Adam. He was like, yeah, what's, what's up, man? Like, yeah. And, and he just was cool, and he was nice. And I think, again, I had, you know, like any sort of, it's not like I was the one dating, but going through this, I was looking for something like, almost like as a casting director, you see a bunch of shitty actors. You're like, God, I want this next one to be the one. Can this guy be our air bud? You know? <laughs> air bud. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to think of a tough <laughs> casting decision. <laughs> that would be tough. <laughs> yeah. How many uh, cocker spaniels can this catch one, a frisbee one, and throw a split finger slider? Right here. This one's got something <laughs> yeah. right here. So uh, you're making me think now about just being like when I dated my uh, stepson's mom. Like I know he was the same way. Like you know you're, you're cool. He he would tell her all the time if you get somebody new, you better have somebody with a good laugh. He'd say shit like that. Wow. But when I first they hit the jackpot with, him, with you, by the way. They did. They really did. They did. I uh, I appreciate that. And I can also speak to that of going through it. It's like there yeah. and knowing you and just you know I can it, shoot baskets. <laughs> okay. Also, you don't call them basket That's shots. Exactly right. That's what I mean. <laughs> I, I couldn't even it, do it. Even if I couldn't had, even bring myself to say it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> even if he had tried again, I would have appreciated him just being like, "You got a wicked jumper." Like, just say say the the jargon and just but he didn't even pretend yeah. he was he as soon Working as he's on that crossover that's yeah. all you gotta say and walk yeah, away just like, walk right, away right, dude right, right. and 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 just start and and even try if he if you know that that's your shot do a quick like holy shit is that meryl streep or <laughs> yeah, you know, i don't right. know who yeah, i was into did. a 10 but you know what the, the the lead from river wild you know and then fucking chuck it up and then let me just hear the bounce and be like oh he and then him just be like oh dude i, I barely missed it you know and then just go inside. But the first night <clears throat> I got to hang out with him, I remember it exactly like it was yesterday. Cause, uh, Did you try hard? No. I, we were. She was like, all right, you want to come over? I'm like, yeah, I really want to meet the kid. And um, I, she had brought him to work a while before, so I had seen him, but yeah. I didn't get to meet him or hang out with him. And he was a sweet kid, and he just loved it. He was just like me, wore his tidy whities everywhere. He was in his tidy whities And I brought pizza dough and sauce, and I was like, we're all going to make pizza. Right? Wow, dude. And uh, he's over there rolling the dough and stuff. And I just, I'm me. And I just step back and look at you. Making pizza in your underpants. And he just fucking turned and looked at his mom. And it was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and I started laughing and that was it. He started laughing too? Uh, he did, I did. I was just, that, that was it. Then we just, that, uh, he got jokes. He got all my stupid jokes. Like I would fuck with him all the time. 
He loved it. So, yeah, we've been – I mean, now we're super tight. Did you hear that, Dennis? A little bit of pizza dough. That's all it is, P And a Dennis. couple of underpants jokes. And you and I could be hanging out post-podcast. Done. That, that truly is a – I mean, dude – and when Put you, the glass <laughs> down. <laughs> when they say comedy is like a, a cure it, and just like a, an equalizer, like, dude, I mean, yeah, like him, you and him getting on the same page like that and recognizing – like, that's just a, a, an icebreaker and you – you get a, a, a gauge on each other's sensibilities in that moment, and like, but also, also for, you would be very good at that because you went through it the same way. You're still, you're, I think so. You know how to talk to that kid. Well, I can you play basketball too. Yeah, you, you could know? definitely play basketball. Yeah, but you know how to talk to that kid. You yeah. know what to say. Yeah, yeah. To that kid, it's not like you're like, ah, I never went through anything like this, and yeah. I don't really know what the fuck to say to you. I was yeah, like, I know what's going on, dude. Um, how so anyway? Yes. What, so Howard was cool. He's the last one before my stepdad, I believe, and uh, George, who's just the best, and. And they've been uh, together for our now, yeah, now, now, and my they both always say too that it's just uh they're like again my mom, uh, dated for I think for, ten ten years maybe eleven before she oh, met wow. George, and uh and that's that that is their one regret and they they say it a good amount where they're just like wish we met earlier you know just to have a little bit more uh, what was it about enjoyment. him that you did you know right away or were you like this <clears throat> one right here or? well real quick Howard uh saw that I was playing the clarinet my mom always wanted me to play the saxophone. And she even sent me to a band camp where it was like they helped you. It was like it was a cool camp, but then there was it was music uh, oriented, and so you know you got to try other instruments, and it was a cool chance to play the sax. And you know woodwind family, so you know going from the clarinet to the sax. I played, is, I played the licorice stick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's like not that uh, uh, crazy of a of a move up. Um, but uh, Howard bought me for the camp a saxophone to take with me but it was like a used saxophone. I remember opening the case and it just smelled like somebody had just peed in it. Like literally a homeless guy. Reed smells like cigarettes. Oh, smoke. sweaty <laughs> Reed still attached. I remember I put it in my mouth and I was like. He bought that shit at a yard sale on yeah. the way over. <laughs> yeah, dude. Or tried it out himself or let the guy who sold it to him be like. Pissed at it. And he's like, does it still sound good? And he's like, let me show you. And then just spit on it and goes, give that to a 10 year old, you know? And, uh, and so I remember opening it being Isn't like. Isn't it funny you can still remember how bad that thing smelled? How bad it smelled? Well, also, it's like a, a saxophone case isn't a small production. No. It's, it's a. And you open and it, and whatever has been hiding in there yeah. is coming yeah. straight for your yeah. nostrils. <laughs> and uh, and there was no way to diffuse that. I remember going to camp, even like taking it into the bathroom to take my sax out, and everyone's like, "What is he doing to that sax?" You know. Um, but I was like, "I'm just trying to avoid the stench getting into our bunk," you know, Damien. And so um, there's a kid who was in our uh, camp named Damien, who was just a, a real real piece of work, and he always hogged the tire swing. I remember that, and. Uh, you know, would brag about getting uh, bullseyes on a, in archery, and it was like, dude, I'm I know that you didn't sign up for that activity. There's no way that you hit the bullseye. He's like, yeah, dude, you just weren't there. Okay, man, this is who you are, by the way, and this is gonna you're gonna be that guy. You're the type of guy who's gonna complain about bad sushi on airplanes. And nobody <laughs> yeah. wants to hear that. You're gonna be the guy who's like, you know, who's got terrible California rolls? Delta Airlines. <laughs> Delta. You're like, cool, Damien. How'd that bullseye go? You fucking fake Robin Hood. <clears throat> And Delta's got the worst. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just doesn't get it. <laughs> it's confused when Mariah Carey throws a, a first pitch that into the into the ground. You know, like, oh really? She hit that F sharp pretty well at the Grammys. She can't throw a slider. So, um, so, uh, so, so Howard was cool. The sax thing I could get over. Then that doesn't work out. And then uh, again, getting ready to go to uh, college. Got into USC. Uh, skipped my NYU audition because our basketball team was one game away from going to the playoffs in high school. Basketball was my sport, and I was an integral part of the team and, you know, set some three-point records at high school and just was all about it, you know? And um, that's why playing in the NBA celeb game was just, like, literally... Yeah, that was awesome. Literally the, you know, like, could have... It was the best. The closest thing I'll ever get to being in the NBA, just to be, you know... To, uh, to have Ray Allen, you know, me post up Steve Smith and Ray Allen and me being like, yo, being like, Ray to Ray, you know, and having him be like, you know, like, at least I got to <laughs> yeah. get, you know, sh shaken off by a Hall of Famer. And so uh, uh, I skipped that uh, audition and got into SC and I was going to go and I had a lot of trepidations about it because, again, I was going to leave my mom and she hadn't met anybody. And she was like, you got to go away for school. You got into the acting school. You got to go there. We'll figure it out. Shit ton of loans. 
you know, got a little bit of financial aid and some single mom, you know, tugging at the heartstrings cash and, uh, and, um, and my grandparents helped, uh, for like one semester and look, it, it is not what it is now. Like I look back, it was a lot then, Yeah. but like, Oh man, I w it wouldn't, I probably would not even go if it were now because it's just like quadrupled, uh, as far as like how much it costs for a semester. So I was like, you got to go. And I was like, yeah, she's like, what are you going to regret not going? You got in, you went on the, down there, you auditioned thousands of kids each year for this BFA, BFA acting program. They're taking 15 of you. You got in, you're not going to go. And I was just like, well, you're going to be by yourself. And okay, I don't want you to get back together with Richard or Marshmallow Face. Like what's, you know, what's going <laughs> to yeah, happen, right. you know? And, uh, and, uh, and so I, I, I go and, uh, or I'm going to go and literally probably a month, <clears throat> a month before I, uh, I'm going to, uh, drive down there and, uh, and move in. She meets George, my stepdad, and, uh, he had just converted to Judaism. And so they met, I think at temple through a friend, uh, I think my mom's friend, Peggy Prince Jew was, um, was, uh, <laughs> was I had gone on a date with him and didn't work out and she suggested um she's like yeah this one this guy george is nice it might be your you know mom wasn't really feeling it he took her to the symphony the first night he's like a real west point grad had a paper out since he was fucking seven is still a financial advisor um you know at uh, just retired from morgan stanley uh numbers guy started this amazing nonprofit called the alexander hamilton and friends association which is now in its like 15th year where they self-funded it on his own, and now it's this huge program. Still looking for investors and donors always, so fucking donate. But it's this, uh, they give a, a high-achieving high school kid, low-income, high-achieving, underprivileged high school kids, no. um, not just scholarships and being like, here's some cash, but they have like this leadership week in Seattle. They do a leadership thing in New York. They do a Guatemala service trip. I've been and they, saying I would love to do that for so long because that was me. I did good in school. I oh, had man. none of that shit, no parents, no anything. I would have been a candidate for this. You would have, and they would have accepted. And some of the kids that they don't even take, I read their stories of like, I'm, I'm supporting my uh, my six brothers and my grandma living in a, a studio apartment. I have straight A's. I have two jobs. You're like, what the fuck, right. dude? And I'm complaining about spraining my ankle, falling exactly. out of an Uber. Like, and and these uh, these kids are just insane. And so he did all that, and and um, and just real good to my mom, and big on puns, you know, things like he came to SC and saw one of my plays senior year, and and uh, there was like a rusty nail in my shitty little apartment uh, that I lived with three acting kids, and one of them sold weed and had two chinchillas that eventually ate each other. Boomer and Mama they ate each other. What happened, Tori? Boomer ate Mama. Oh fuck! Guess For it's real? time to move out. Yeah, uh, chinchillas. Never thought I would be around a chinchilla <laughs> in my entire <laughs> life. And these two, uh, they, I didn't know they did that. Yeah, dude, they're vicious creatures. Damn. But they were sweet. I definitely got way too high one night, and um, and uh, one of them got out. And uh, look, I'm an animal person, and by that I mean like dog. And then like, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> cats can go fuck themselves. <laughs> The amount of times, look, I kicked my sister's cat in, I think, seventh grade, and I think word spread to the rest of the feline community. Don't fuck because with this the way guy. That, don't fuck with this guy. <clears throat> because the way that friends' cats look at me, even stray cats, that's how you know that fucking like, the message got passed down. Like, if you just walk through an alley or out of a fucking Baskin Robbins and see a cat just go, <sighs> you're like, I fucking I know what you did to Marco in 1994, you know? <laughs> You know? Viva Marco! <laughs> yeah. I saw that push off with your foot. Oh yeah, it was gentle. <laughs> Fuck that bullshit, man. You pushed hard. You had shoes on. You were wearing the Patrick Ewing Adidas. Remember that shoe? Just said Ewing on I the back. I had that shoe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or that. it was Reebok. And uh, so anyway, so so uh, um, what was my, what was my point? Uh, dog George. The fuck was I talking about? Talking about how good of a duty he was. Good of a duty. Oh, the puns. Oh, he picks mm -hmm. up a nail. Ch yeah, chinchillas eating nail. each other. Rusty nail. And he goes, well, Adam, he goes, he goes, good job. He goes, he goes, boy, it's a great show. He goes, you really nailed the part. <laughs> like that type of shit. Yeah. But he is a quick thinker, man. And to his credit, like sometimes it took me a while to get to know his sensibility comedically. So he'd say something and I'd be like, <laughs> I don't, was that the joke? I don't know. What the fuck are you talking about, dude? You and I are not on the same page. And then he took me to a Sonics game, RIP, Sonics versus Lakers, to ask me if he could marry my mom. Wow, fuck was, yeah. Yeah, dude. Good man. Because he knew, he just like, he Good saw. Man. And again, I was at a time where I was so accepting of like, I'm about to leave for college, I need my mom to not be alone. And, uh, and so definitely I probably was going in like, again, wanting this, you know, let's let this be the air bud that fucking fucking shoot three pointers, you know? Like I wanted him to be the guy. He's out there nosing three. <laughs> 
Uh. He's like, in 20 years, this reference is going to make sense. What? You'll say it on a podcast. <laughs> You'll see. And so I, uh, I, I was like, all right, he's cool. He's not trying too hard. He did buy me a computer for college, big time, joking about the buy me a laptop. He did that. And I said no at first, too. And he did it anyway. Because I was just like, no, I go, I appreciate it, man. I go, you're, I go, you know, and all this. And they took me to the Sonics game. And he's like, Adam, so, uh, so there's a reason I wanted you to come here and, uh, and go to the game. And you know, just, I, uh, as you know, I really like your mom. She's, she's just the best. And I just, I would, uh, I'd love to, I want to ask you, you are the man of the house. You know, and uh, I could get your uh, mom's hand in marriage. And I just go, I don't think so, George. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah, as a joke, right. trying to be funny. <clears throat> and he just goes, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Game hadn't even yeah, started. Let me yeah. just, uh, didn't really have a follow-up to that <laughs> oh, answer. Oh, Sid! Uh, <laughs> like, we got a long to way Sean to go. Kemp throw it down. <laughs> yeah, we can talk about your life later. Jeez, selfish. <laughs> trying to see if Detlin Shrimp still has what it takes. Detlin. And so, uh, and so then I go, no, dude, obviously. I go, that'd be amazing. I go, I'd love to have you as a, as a, as a stepdad. And he was like, how about a real dad? I was like, don't push it. And uh, no, you got it's, one of those. It's, yeah, <laughs> I got one of those. So, uh, so yeah, so then that, that worked out. And then, um, and it's been great. And just, you know, dang, man, just to get, no, leaving to go to school knowing that my mom, I mean, you know, I think. Yeah. What a relief. Yeah, what a relief. And I was able to jump he's in fully. He's a good fully. dude. He's, she's not just dating. He's a good yeah, man. Dude. And she, she was able to not have to work three, four jobs anymore. Still worked for a while. And then slowly but surely, my mom always wanted to act. My grandpa always, she was so, again, my mom, just her and I, eighth grade through high school, my sister went to this uh, all-girls school. Because uh, just at one point she stole uh, my mom's van, our space van, some Astro van. In eighth grade? When I was in eighth grade. She oh, was in 10th. Right. And her and her boyfriend, Took all my money that I'd saved up for my bar mitzvah, which was probably a couple grand, all my clothes in my closet for her boyfriend, and they drove to Arizona because my dad was living there with his family at the time, and she just loved it. And oh, like, so he left, <clears throat> he left Seattle. Yeah, there's so many pieces to this puzzle. But yeah, they went from Seattle to Arizona. He was trying to get his license back uh, medically and, um, and did. And then they went to Kwajalein and then Midway Island and then Lake Where Chelan. Where the hell is that? <clears throat> that uh, South, up, South up Pacific. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, first time I drank was with these uh, uh, guys from the Philippines. Played basketball with them every day. Just got fucked up. And and um, shout out to Norman if you're uh, still on Midway Island. Um, you had a wicked crossover, but uh, fucking you know you know you know you know what happened in the post. And um, <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, and so yeah. So then uh, my mom just crushed it, helping out with plays and and everything, washing my basketball, just being there. She was just like an eighth grade and and through high school. That is a very uh, instrumental time as yeah. a kid and so again we became best friends and, and enemies we at each other's throats needed each other but trying to figure it out me being frustrated probably that she was by herself and then around me so much and then just me trying to you know and her trying to play both roles and I used to do the stupid joke where it was like she bought me condoms when I was 11 and I was like was it awkward yeah you know was it uh embarrassing like for sure um you know was I 10 you know almost I was nine you know but I was flattering because she believed in me you know or it was you know flattering and so uh yeah and that's why I don't do that joke anymore um <laughs> did you, if you could hear that silence in the room and so uh but again she was just so and that's why I'm a mama's boy like we just you know she just did everything do you want to make sure I still had everything to and working all these jobs to be able to have the opportunities to do everything and not feel and we didn't need a lot and didn't have a shit ton but you know uh just to, to, to be able to go to a movie with my buddies on the weekend and give me some cash for that, you know, stuff like that, and not miss out. Um, so during all this time, mm -hmm. your mom gets finally gets a good man, and, and during all this, are you still in touch with your dad? Are you in contact? Are you visiting? Like, what is that like? Not. Because not, once he moves. Yes, once he moves, and then, um, man, and then I go visit him on the islands, which is great, and, uh, and did stand up for the very... Uh, first time on Midway Island when he was the main dock out there and and he was in the main dock on Kwajalein too which he loved and it was great dude living golf karting to work the beach you're if you know again was doing a lot of big stuff but if something really insane went down they'd fly people to the big island uh, by the way in the middle of nowhere Midway Island like look it up like literally I remember us the plane um, you know uh, descending over water and like there's a little strip like mm -hmm. of island and couldn't see it as we're going down, so we're getting lower and lower. And I literally in the back of the plane go, <clears throat> "Can anybody see anything?" <laughs> like, 
other than water. <laughs> and they were just like turn around and then, and then you know if somebody expresses that concern, people are just like, "You're right, I can't, I can only see we're gonna crash." You know, and and uh, it was like, terrifying. It to a <laughs> yeah, dude. Even the pilot's like, "You're right, I can't see." Shit. The pilot got <laughs> yeah. nervous. But so we were going real low, and then finally, all of a sudden, we hit. I swear to God, dude, could not see the land. It was such a a, a minimal strip, and then we hit, and I was like. All right, maybe the water's just real hard, you know? And then, uh, and then we, we coasted in. And, but I did stand up. And I remember my dad, who doesn't drink a lot, I got pretty drunk that night because I committed to doing an hour of stand up. I'd done maybe two open mics in Seattle oh before I moved God. to LA. And I was like, I'm a comic. I did a couple frat parties before bands, which was awful because everyone's waiting for the band. It starts 45 minutes late. By the time you get up there and you're like, well, I rehearsed 30 minutes, so I'm doing 30 minutes. Yeah, do I have a 12 minute bit on Charlie Brown? <laughs> You're goddamn right. You're here all 12 motherfuckers. You know, all, all 12, 12 minutes and probably a, an extra additional improv minute. <laughs> so, uh, uh, and so I do 30, or no, an hour. And, uh, and I'd say like three of those jokes were good, where it was like there, was a, there were bike cops there, and somebody gave somebody a ticket for not having a handlebar on their um, bike. And I heard about that earlier in the day, and I was just like, like and it was the whole thing about how you know, bored do you have to be on this fucking island and or how little crime is really going on that a handlebar and do this whole act out of him going back to his, you know, uh, boss, you know, trying to be all like, you know, this kid was driving around a handlebar. <laughs> that won't be happening anytime uh, soon again. And it was like, dude, Jerry, nobody gives a shit, man. And then I uh, had attended a birthday party for my, uh, one of my brothers that day. And so I did a, probably a 15 minute bit on how awful all of the kids were at that birthday party. By the way, these are the kids of these people that are at the show. Because <laughs> yeah, right. it's maybe a thousand people live on this island. Yeah. So I'm just like, I don't know whose kid is Daniel, but that kid sucks. And everyone's, it was just quiet. Ooh. My dad was like, uh, 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 you know, <laughs> I'm not going to be on this island too much longer. My kid is just chastising. <laughs> Got me outed. Yeah, dude. Because one kid, I remember at my brother's birthday party, literally picked up a can of Sprite at one point, And I'm standing like in the wall and like trying to lead some game. I think it was, you know, pin a tail on the... A donkey or something, you know, one of those classics. And all of a sudden I look up and he was just like shaking a can of Sprite. And I go, Daniel, what are you doing, man? He goes, this, ah, and fucking chucks it at my head. And I literally was like fucking like that. And it hits the wall and explodes. And I go, damn it, Daniel. And, uh, and I remember telling that story at the birthday party and being like, dude, hey, was swallowing ever an option? <laughs> and uh, where's Danny's mom? Yeah, where's Danny's mom? <laughs> And dude, it was weird. I bet that was weird. <laughs> yeah, but I, uh, but so then, yeah, my dad and I, he just, they went through him and moved around. He trying to get his license back uh, from sh sh some shit that went down. And, uh, and he was, uh, when I was, here's when we really connected. And uh, I know we got to wrap up, but when he really connected, I was in college uh, in my uh, fraternity, living in the fraternity at a, at a party. And he's, they had to move. They were living in like a one bedroom in Arizona, struggling for cash, him and his family, two, three kids, wife. And, in a one uh, bedroom in Arizona, yeah, and and uh, and uh, <coughs> and uh, <coughs> you can hear it in your throat clear. I can hear it in your throat. <coughs> I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> You're I making this lunch in weird. Your throat clear. <laughs> can I have the rest <laughs> of your fries? I'ma eat the rest <laughs> of those fries. So he uh, he was working uh, a telemarketer job. He picked that up to make some extra cash for like 15, 16 hours a day selling magazines and calling and doing that. And that was his, and he would call me. He started calling me to vent and tell me these stories. And I started to recognize, again, just trying to be there and, and, and you know, diffuse some of the, the severity of just that for him. And, uh, and he, he started to reach out and be like, I'm proud of you, this and that. And just as I got to college, and we just started to talk a little more. And, and sports was always a great, it was always had that. Talking about Seattle sports, the NBA. We'd always just talk about, that was truly what it, our conversations consisted of for a long time. Just, do you see that? Do you see that? And, that? and that was enough. And then, and they started to be like, I'm proud in the school and taking an interest in other stuff, which he hadn't really ever like, tell me about the play and what the, you know, and really asking. And so I was like, all right, cool. <clears throat> and I don't think I ever needed more than that. I just, again, was just like, you know, you understood, you're like, man, this is what he is. This is what he's going to be for me. And mom is kind of crushing both parts. So I don't need, I, I, I was always like, I'm lucky I got <clears throat> that. Right. What am I going to be greedy? I need two fucking parents right. that are going to shower me, me with love. I got one. That feels pretty good, you know? And, uh, and so uh, he'd tell me these stories, and I was just like, man, and these insane stories. And then he started crushing it, and he was like winning all these awards for the telemarketing thing. And, and there was a lot of sadness to it. He was definitely very depressed that he was doing that. <clears throat> you're doing open heart surgeries, oh, and now I'm you're like, do you guys want to subscribe to Sports Illustrated? <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> I mean, right. 
that's fucking crazy, yeah. dude. And and so I would listen. I would go you guys myself. Want to subscribe to uh, Sports Illustrated. <laughs> Do you have high cholesterol? <laughs> Listen, let's work some cash price out over here. I still got the skill. I don't got the license, but I got the skill. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, he probably did combine both worlds. And, uh, and I would lock myself in my fraternity room at the party and, and just checked out of the party two, three hours on the phone with him. Just That's let nice. him vent. Good. See the party just quiet. That's when you started seeing him as a person. Yeah, man. And not and also, necessarily dad and yeah. flaws. And, and we'd laugh, and I'd go out of my way to like – he also was a cool thing where – Getting to know where you got your sense of humor from. Again, like both of them are so funny. And I and now at a point to where we joke around a lot and it's awesome. I used to never do that with my mom. Again, in high school, it was just like your mom, like if she'd said something funny, I was almost like embarrassed. Right. So to be able to do that is like just awesome. And uh and he um you know, I would he would almost tell me things to probably hope that I would find the funny in it for him. And then we'd laugh and he'd always tell me, Man, thanks for talking. I feel a lot I feel better, you know, and I was like, Cool. I love I, you, Dad. I didn't need to dry hump that girl out there. You know? Fuck you for those basket shots. <laughs> he put that on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that, what, so take me <clears throat> to the post yeah. that I saw. So, wow, dude. Well obviously, done. you reconnected. That's a pretty solid amount of backstory to lead up to this yeah, picture. Yeah, it is. It's actually kind of perfect. This so is the show, by the way. But you did reconnect in college. So then you started being, being and sis more didn't, in touch there. Sis definitely just, again, being a little older, just had right. a lot more feelings to the whole situation. Absolutely. And also, again, as a default, I see that. And that definitely has bugged him. <clears throat> so I'm like, I'm going to I'm gonna extra step it up and, and, and try to have I mean, a relationship. Good for you for doing that. Because I don't want him to. He shouldn't have to. People make mistakes, man. And there was a moment when I was in Arizona. Right. It wasn't like he was abusive to you or oh, any of that shit. It's he just fucked up, man. Yeah. And there was a moment where, uh, and you know, sometimes you need a little, you need something from somebody, whether it's an acknowledgement of the past or something. And But I never really required that. I just go. Or like a glass yeah. blown trinket. Or... <laughs> a glass blown. <laughs> he goes, I got this from Richard. He uh, made it of you and I. Uh, spooning in the bed opposite of Dennis and your mom. It's funny how all the worlds collided. Yeah. <laughs> it's a <laughs> it's a marshmallow head <laughs> holding a saxophone, <laughs> holding a wet used saxophone. A wet, yeah, it's so sick. <laughs> with the homeless guy who pissed in it. <laughs> so um, yeah, I would just want to have a relationship. But so I was at one of the uh, islands where he lived at one point, and he was uh, I was reading a bedtime story to one of my brothers and my dad's sitting there and my dad's doing it too. And then he read a story and they just stopped halfway through reading and just started crying. And then he goes, uh, uh, all right, real moment. And he goes, uh, he goes, man, he goes, I'm sorry. I never did this for you. And he goes, and then he goes, and they just paused and goes, I'm sorry. And I was like, man, all right, cool. Like got it. Like that was, that kind of was, you know, Two I didn't words, need you to kind of it all away. Yeah, he just kind of, because yeah. he was doing this with his other son and just kind of, because, yeah, I don't remember that ever happening. And I think he just, it just hit him and he acknowledged it. And then I was, and it was just like, and, you know, it was so, I was just like, yeah, it's all good. Hey, it's fine. I didn't need, I didn't fucking, I still don't read books, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we had a shitty selection. What, were you going to read me, The Chosen? <laughs> You know, trying to, again, do, like, make him feel good uh, right, and diffuse yeah. it with humor. And um, and so uh, <laughs> <laughs> we had just a bunch of magazines, which I know that was your world. So, but no, not the shit on what you did, but I didn't want to read that shit, you know. And uh, I think we had Paul Abdul's biography. I didn't, Paul hey, Abdul. man, straight up, <laughs> you know, I didn't want to read that shit. <laughs> Let's take two steps forward and two steps back and fucking recognize that. Uh, and so, uh, so, yeah, so then when he got to the post, he... Uh, He's been, you know, doctors are the worst patients. They never want to call attention to themselves and, and uh, get checked up or address things. But he is in tune with what's going on. And he's, you know, like I said, just turned 75 in this past fall. He, uh, and I've helped them out a lot too. I've been fortunate to, to uh, do okay in the last couple of years and, you know, helped them out a lot. And my sister and her fam, like with no, and as, as I mentioned off, off air, like it's created some tension between my sister and her family a little bit to where my brother-in-law and I, who is the best, but him and I got into it <laughs> through text. And his last text to me was, bro, I'll tell you if I ever see you. And he's a tough guy and, uh, you know, rapper, construction guy. 
white, Rapper. big, fucking tough, definitely bigger than me. And he was like, if I ever see <laughs> you, stay away from me. Otherwise, we'll find out if there is a, a man bone in that weak body. To which I texted, ah, there's that family man I was looking to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> So things did not end on a high note, but we're good now. I think what you maybe what you could do is take you could take you could be his fucking Warren G. I Whoa. mean his uh, Nate dog, Nate and you dog. could hit you do his uh, all his hooks. <laughs> yeah, dude. Heard it in your throat, clear. He's like, I'm dirty. <laughs> <laughs> He's the man, dude. He's a good dude. It's yeah, that's a whole well, dirty. That'll be that'll be part two of this program. But so, so my dad uh, got this uh, perforated diverticulitis, which is a like inflamed of the colon and insane stomach pains. My stepmom rushed him to the hospital. She's like, your dad's in the ER. Like he's not, he's in terrible pain. Couldn't stand up at work. I was trying to power through it. He, he's on the phone with me. He just has to hang up because he's crying and he's just like in so much pain. And man, I'm just like, oh shit, something is bad. He's, and he's almost 75. So yeah. you're just like, this is not the time for, they, they, they got to do emergency surgery. They do it. He's out. He's feeling okay. I get on the next plane. I go up to Portland, drive to Salem, uh, cancel any shit I had, and it's just like I gotta go. My sister and her family, they just don't have the means or the time to break away. And again, and even my brothers, like who are attentive and a part. And my one of my uh, brothers, one um, of his kids, helped was instrumental in, in moving them from Washington down and getting his his mom, my stepmom, down there with him and finding them a place and and gave him some cash to get things situated and and so i'm just like i'm going up there i think i'm the person who can do this and the brothers don't got time either so i go up there and and stay in the hospital with him for three days and man he was shaken up and it was just so awful to see him so <clears throat> physically weak but also just aware of like oh man like being this is a never happened he's like my last surgery was getting my wisdom teeth out when i was like five i was like it was a pretty good run and uh you know 70 run. years and so he he was just very he was just real taken aback and and it just started talking to me nonstop. and again i'm just trying to be fun and positive it's like he's on the phone with the magazines i'm trying to just spin everything lightly and be attentive and sleep at the hospital and and tell stories and then he just starts going down memory lane and just telling stories and recounting things in a way to where it almost felt like he knew that, that this was he, this he wasn't going to get out of this or maybe not work again or something and so he just got real introspective and just started opening up about so many things, crying a lot, apologizing again. Um, you know, I'm sorry. Yeah, I had to see, you know, Dennis shoot like that, you know. And, uh, <laughs> no, no, but just sorry about everything I did with your mom. And, and he patched things up with my sis, which was weird. They had a crazy moment on the phone where they like, he finally apologized to her, which was like, I mean, dude, it just, and she finally could like let go and be, Cause she man held on to so much over the years, like seeing, it's just, again, just seeing a lot more and, 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 and then my mom real concerned. They don't talk they haven't talked in a while, but they still are just, they ask me all oh, how's the other one doing? And if something's going on medically, I give them an update and even have asked my dad for things. And there was a point by the way, real quick, when my dad was uh, doing the magazines, my mom hit me up and she's like, I'm got these lawyers and I'm going to go after your dad for, you know, basically not getting child support for a long time. And I go, mom, this is what's going on. And she's like, I don't want to she goes illustrated right now, mom. It's <laughs> <laughs> the swimsuit issues coming up next month. Could you, could you reconsider? <laughs> we got a good thing going here. I've been tracking this next, uh, <laughs> these next two months of who's on the cover. And it's, <laughs> it's a good one. And I don't know if you know anything about the, uh, magazine stand prices, but they're, they're going on. We up. got a good thing going here. Mom. <laughs> that's so funny, dude. Again, that's a great part of the one man show. So, I tell her that, and she goes, well, I'm not an animal. Thank you for the info. And just never did. Wow. Ever. And she, I mean. Good for your mom, man. Man, she, in her, deserving of what she endured and made work and like, yeah, like you should, you're, you deserve all of what you should have, you know, cashed in on. Didn't. So she um, calls me and goes, how's he doing? I go, great. And I go, I mean, put him on FaceTime. I put uh, her on FaceTime and gave my dad the phone. And is this and the first time they've talked in in a while, man? Yeah. I'm gonna say at least five years. Okay, and not they don't text, they don't like not happy birthdays or whatever. They just hear about each other and might have seen each other at a at a one of my niece's birthday parties, maybe in that maybe three three to five years. I've seen each other maybe no no long five years at least, and uh, and put him and he's on Facetime with her and uh, and uh, he just starts crying and then she. It's kind of staying strong and she starts tearing up 
and then uh and then they just she kind of starts to make jokes and being like oh you know you oh you look you know look good or whatever or like you look it looks like a good bed or so she makes some joke or you know are they feeding you well and this and that and just trying to be in her you know put in fashion just high spirits and just making light of everything and then my dad just uh starts and again just kind of the real uh you know raw like i'm sorry and just wow like, he gave it to everybody yeah man. yeah man and it was like oh it was just so and i'm just sitting there being like can i get one more grape jello <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna be outside shooting baskets <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. It was. I mean, basket shots. Yeah, still can't shots. say it right. I can't, right. I can't it. even do it. You can't even do it if you tried. <laughs> and so uh, it was crazy, man. And I, I, uh, yeah, just watching them talk and like that's awesome. Again, not even like circle, having though. that much time go by, and then this moment to happen, and him apologize, and her take it in, and like, and again, and knowing some of the backstory of what my mom went through, and yeah. and him it was just man it was uh it was really intense and so yeah i i wanted a screenshot of them just in that mo i just wanted to remember that moment and so i took that screenshot of her facetiming him mm -hmm. and uh because it was just so powerful and it was so and then it was I, powerful to read i mean yeah, I, I didn't I, a lot of people don't ever first of all a lot of people never do that and and even when they're ready to a lot of people are dead and gone yeah you know you wait that long sometimes you don't get the opportunity to say that to that person you know yeah, it was, uh, yeah, and I, I kept thinking about it, and then I got on that plane after I stayed a few more days and, and felt like he was, you know, on the mend and went back another time and because uh, he was there for a little over a month and um, and then set him up with some home care and whatnot, but uh, I just kept thinking about it, and it was so just over, you know, sometimes you just got to, you know, put, it's just, you're so overwhelmed with emotion and so many things, and I'm just like, I started texting it to, uh to a buddy of mine uh, who knows my folks and 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 then he was just like man that was he's like this is like this is incredible like he's like you should like you know post something about this it's a really like you know a worthwhile situation for people to just hear about and yeah. it's really raw for you and I was like yeah but it's not funny isn't that what we're supposed to be doing and and I did and it got like yeah not uh I mean look there's a, a video of uh you know, my dwarf buddy, Brad, uh, dunking a basketball that has way more views. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but it was, it felt good to put it out and it was really cool to see people like unexpectedly be like, this was beautiful. Like I fit and, and it, it was just cool to share something like that. And, that was and, a while ago and I've remembered yeah. it and it's not even something you had brought to the table on this. I, yeah. I, I said to Nadav earlier, like, I really want to ask him about that. I wonder yeah. if he's comfortable talking about it. So yeah, I'm for sure, man. I mean, and you, I'm glad you all had that opportunity too. It's fucking awesome. Thanks, it takes man. a long time sometimes, doesn't it? Good well, just, God. And it's great that you asked me that and that we really went through so much because, and that is, I mean, one chapter in this whole story that right. built to that moment. But like, I think hopefully everyone got enough of an understanding of what that moment was and why it was so important to me because of everything that had happened. And, and so, uh, cause you know, at the end of the day, you just, you want people despite of what's happened and happening, like to get along and be at least cordial and not like my, my uh, folks need to be best friends, but to be able to like, you know, see each other in that moment. And, yeah. and you know, and again, I think he probably thought something was, not going to turn out favorable for him so he really felt extra a need to to say something but um it would have been great if he was just like and uh i'm glad uh i'm glad he uh he took my advice and, and called dennis a, a <laughs> pussy cocksucker tits bitch because That's i did boy. i did say that once <laughs> about you so it's funny that he copyright or uh, plagiarized my uh <laughs> my insults well, brother, we got to get you out <clears throat> yeah. here. Thank you, man. Uh, thank you. Could thank talk you, you for so hours. much. I love you. I love you, Ryan. You're great. Will yeah, you one more great. time plug whatever you'd like, please? Uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll be crying in the parking lot. <laughs> um, thinking about ten minutes, and um, so you can see me there. Got a hoop out there for the basket <laughs> shot. <laughs> if you did, and you got video of that, <laughs> and somehow Dennis was there. Um, no, Adam Ray Comedy on Twitter and Instagram, adamraycomedy.com uh, for my tour dates about last night, the podcast, read the room, the album, full videos now up on YouTube, which is uh, youtube.com slash adamray24. And um, Elwin uh, Shira, I'm uh, the yeah. voice of the talking horse Swift Wind on Shira that's on Netflix. I think season three drops uh, August 3rd. Um, you got a lot going on, brother. Congrats just trying, on all, all of it.
Dude, you're crushing it. The show's amazing. This is a lot of fun. Dude. It's a great, you found a really great avenue that's very you and still all the comedy and, and, the, uh, and the storytelling. But it's like, you know, it's, it's uh, important that like this part of, you know, because in my head I was like, God, I got these stories, but like I got to make sure that we keep the funny in it, you know, because I don't think anybody wants you're to truly pro, listen dude. to no. just, you know, flatline. But we open strong. Jeremiah Fulford oh. Foster, by the way. Look him up. Tweet at him. I'm sure Vote he'll be for him. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, brother. I, I appreciate you. you being I here. I love you, Ryan. I am Ryan Sickler on all social media, RyanSickler.com. We'll talk to you all next week. <laughs>